Escape from Tarkov is a brutal first person shooter and I love it. But it has some interesting if not low minimum system requirements. So today we're going to build a PC with these specs and see if we can actually play the game. I hope you enjoy the video folks. My name's Andy and this is Andy's Tech. Welcome to the channel. Escape from Tarkov, love it or hate it, is a hardcore and realistic first person shooter that would give the Spartans Birth of Fire a run for its money. From the game developer Battlestate Games, it is based in the fictional Novinsky region in Russia. Now still in beta, it can prove a challenge for even high-end systems when you start to turn the settings right up. But we're a budget channel though, and that would be too easy. But before we go through them, I'd love to know in the comments below what low-end systems you guys are rocking to play this game with. Because after all, a low-end gamer is a resourceful gamer, and you need all of that you can muster in this game. But moving on, and before we get into the parts I've put together for this build, let's go through the requirements first for the game. Now Battlestar states, as of October 2021, you will need a minimum of a Core 2 Duo or i3 running at 2.4GHz, or AMD Funum 2. A GPU with 1GB of VRAM that supports DirectX 11 and 8GB of system memory and 8GB or more of storage space. Now that's hardly a tall order and covers pretty much 95% of gaming PCs out there from the last decade and a bit. But will that be enough to give us a playable experience? I'm not convinced. So let's go through what I've put together for this build. And in the blue corner we have an ASUS ITX motherboard sporting an i3-3220, clocked at 3.3 GHz, and 8 GB of DDR3 running at 1600 MHz in dual channel. Now that's a little over our 2.4 GHz stated in the requirements, but I honestly don't think you can buy a 2.4 GHz i3, and even the scrimpiest PC gamer should be able to afford a 3rd gen i5, which can be picked up here in the UK for about £5 currently. Now in the red corner we have an ASUS 1GB HD6770, an old AMD card now but a capable mid-range GPU in its day. Storage wise we're using 128GB SSD, mainly for my sanity and boot times, plus these can be picked up for peanuts these days, like this Samsung drive I picked up refurbished for £14. Now for the glue holding all this performance hardware together, we have a 750 watt power supply of questionable nobility and a gaming case you wouldn't bring home to your parents. But hey, they're going to serve their purpose here for us. So moving on, and after putting this build together, we're nearly ready to see if this little system will throw down its gauntlet in challenge or run to the hills crying for its mother. But first, let's try to get the most out of the system we can. So jumping into the BIOS, and there's nothing we can do with the CPU, we're stuck at the 3.3 GHz with a locked CPU, but we can adjust the timings on the RAM to tighten them up slightly. Every little helps, right? Next, with Afterburner up on the desktop, I went for a dirty overclock, putting 925 MHz on the core and 1225 MHz on the memory, which was stable right off the bat and should give us a helping hand. So with our little system pumped up with all the courage it's ever gonna get, that leaves us with nothing else to do but embark on this quest to see if this minimum system requirements PC can actually run the game and even give us a playable experience, albeit with some graphical sacrifices. So here we are in the game menu and if we jump into the settings tab, we're going for the pre-selected option first which is 720p with everything set to low or off. So let's jump into a game. I'm going in as a scav, as I don't want to lose all my stuff if it crashes out, and we'll use the customs map. So here we go. Oh. Now I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I didn't preload the game for a test run, and I did expect some problems. But no matter what I tried, the game just could not get past this load screen. It just kept crashing out. I DDU'd and even swapped the RAM out for another kit. But we won't be deterred and I'll put it down to old AMD drivers. So with my trusty and fail safe GTX 550 Ti in the system, we were back for round two.
and result, the GTX 550 Ti worked its magic. Now we were going for a minimum playable experience and I expected, well I didn't expect anything really, maybe just a big flop and the HD 6770 certainly left us in need of some marriage counselling. But the little system threw its gauntlet down and we were getting a plus 30 FPS experience without any major dips or frame drops below that over the three games I played. Now is this a playable experience? It's not unplayable granted and 60 FPS is needed really for a competitive game like this. Plus the graphics look pretty terrible at these low settings. But the game does play and plays with a 30 plus FPS average. So do the minimum requirements stated for the game actually work? Well ish, I'll let you guys be the judges. And that brings us to the end of the video. Thank you for watching. I hope you have enjoyed the video. I've had a lot of fun making it and please leave me a like or a dislike or drop me a comment down below. Please subscribe to the channel to get more content and so we can grow together. Take care, God bless and hopefully see you in the next one.